What's up guys, it's Brad from JBH Media here. Today I'm going to be doing a very basic matte painting tutorial. I'm just going over some of the concepts of adding basic set extensions to your footage in After Effects and uh, achieving some realistic results. In my opinion, matte painting is one of the most useful skills you can have as an independent filmmaker. It's super easy to learn and there's really, in my opinion, no excuse not to know it as it can uh, definitely add a lot of production value to your films. And I'm just going to kind of go through the process and the concepts um, that I usually go through in After Effects to make one. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm going to be using two pictures in this tutorial, and I'll actually uh, uh, upload them for you guys to download if you want to try it out at the same time. But just keep in mind that the concepts that I'm uh, going to be showing you in this video are applicable for any uh, matte painting that you're going to do. Let's get started. Bring this picture in. Oops. Let me drag this picture in real quick. Just like so, let me scale it up a little bit. Um, so then we're going to bring in our second picture, which is we're actually going to, uh, well, all we're going to be doing for this tutorial is just adding a little building right in this area and then color correcting it to match our footage. Um, so let's see if I can find a building here. Here's our building that we're going to add. Let's scale it down. All right, so the first step I'm gonna do is uh, mask around our building here so we can just isolate it and then combine it with our uh, second layer down here um, so that we don't all have all this grass and stuff in the background. So let's just do that real quick. Select your pen tool over here and then uh, go around your footage. You don't have to be too precise because we're gonna feather the bottom here, blend the pixels into the uh, lower image. I'll get to that later though. And up here, we're going to actually do a color key here in a little bit to take out the blue and uh, the clouds. So don't worry too much about that either. All right, so let's go. Let's go ahead and add our key to get rid of these clouds here, so we don't have to do a lot of the precise masking around the uh, building here. So go to Effect, uh, Keying, then go to Color Key, and select your Pen tool here. Just select that. And uh, as you can see, it didn't do anything yet, but we're going to increase the tolerance here and hopefully get some better. Unfortunately the, the sky is not all blue but I think you can get away with losing a little detail. Uh, so just go ahead and bring that color tolerance up until you uh, get rid of those clouds there. You can tweak these settings a little more. I'm going to leave it as it is for the sake of efficiency and getting this tutorial out to you guys. Okay so we got rid of the sky. Um, we got the mask down. Um, go ahead and click here to get rid of that mask. Our second step after taking out the building that we're going to add to this uh, background footage here is to make sure that the perspective of the image you're overlaying is correct. Fortunately, this picture of the building is actually taken at a similar angle and perspective as the background shot here, but just keep in mind that if it's uh, not at a similar angle, you're, you can maybe grab a uh, corner pin tool, which is under, I think, distort, and what you can actually do is, you can mess with it here. You can see it's it's kind of it kind of see it kind of distorts it. So yeah, if you don't have the correct perspective um, that matches, mess around with the corner pin, uh, distort your image to uh, match the uh, background. Um, so yeah, let's keep moving. Um, make sure the scale's right. Um, this this building looks a little bit small, so I'm going to go ahead and increase the size a little bit. So yeah, that that looks about right. I'm going to just keep moving through so we can uh, get through it, but tweak it a little bit more to uh, get the scale right. That's just our second step. So our third step here is tweaking the color correction, saturation, and uh, exposure of our overlaid image here. So we're going to go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves, and Effect, Color Correction, Hue Saturation. Um, and first we're going to decrease the, the brightness of this image a little bit. As you can see, this overlaid building is a little bit more, uh, has a little more sun on it than our uh, background shot here. So just going to lower the brightness a little bit, just like that. As you can see here, these uh, plants over here really add a lot of vibrance to the shot, and we don't want the saturations of these two images to be different. So we're just going to bring the saturation bar down here and uh, until we feel it's good. That's probably good right there. As you can see, you kind of tweak, kind of tweak these two uh, effects here, your curves and your hue saturation to try to get this as seamless as possible before we feather this mask here, which is what we're going to do next. So yeah, that's our that's our third step here. 
Um, now we're going to go ahead and go to our mask. As you can see before, we create, actually created this mask around our image to cut it out um, and, lay, and overlay it on the background. Um, and usually you can, uh, you can actually feather this mask before you add the hue and saturation and curves effect. Uh, but I like to do the hue and saturation and curves before I actually feather it because I feel like I can get a little more precise when it comes to color correcting that image without it already blending into the background through the feather. Let's uh, go ahead and go to our feather now. Open this up right here, go to feather, and then we're just I'm gonna go ahead and take the mask off, bring this up just a little bit. Let's see here. Keep bringing it up until you can, what we're doing here is we're just blending the uh, pixels of the uh, overlaid image into the background here to kind of create a seamless result. So yeah, I increased the feathering there a little bit, but yeah, experiment, experiment with it. Um, try to get it as seamless as possible. Another thing you can do is, if you find the feathering is not working as well, is go back to the mask and try to find the best places uh, to cut off the mask. Like if, for example, like if you, you put the mask ending over there, the shot doesn't blend as well. So you want to try to get the seams as well in place as possible before you actually uh, start feathering and messing with it. That looks pretty good. You can use, there's still room for some tweaking there. Um, that's the general idea though. This looks pretty good. Um, the final thing I'm going to do is add a quick uh, color grade to the overall shot to blend everything together. And we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer. Then we're going to go ahead and add a uh, curves. And then maybe a uh, photo filter just for fun. So let's just get a little more film look going on. Always add a nice little increase of contrast. Maybe we'll add a uh, colorama effect or something. How you color correct really depends on the style you're going for. Um, I generally always add a curves effect and then whether or not I uh, add a stylistic look like this uh, kind of depends on the type of film that I'm doing. Anyway, you get the basic idea. If you want, you can add a uh, letterbox, a black letterbox, get, get more of that cinematic look. Go ahead and uh, make a layer that's black, make a mask over that, and then take the mask to subtract. And you have a nice little letterbox. Makes your shot look a little more cinematic and widescreen. Just to go over the general idea one more time, first you get your uh, two layers on top of each other, match the perspectives of the shots, uh, and then uh, mask out whichever one you're overlaying. Then you want to color correct your overlaid footage with exposure, hue, saturation, and uh, sometimes even mess with the sharpness a little bit depending on uh, how your two plates are matching. Then after you uh, adjust the color correction, you want to feather the mask that you previously created so that you blend those pixels into the uh, bottom layer um, and kind of blend that into the scene. And then finally, you want to add your final color grade. And then if you want, go ahead and add a matte box, make, make that widescreen look, and then you have your final shot. Anyway, that's it, guys. Be sure to like this video if you thought it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. JBS Media Facebook page is in the description below if you want to like it there to get the latest updates. Feel free to do so. I have an ebook uh, on filmmaking and just kind of general concepts coming out pretty soon. It's going to be free, so if that's something you're interested in, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, hopefully I'll get that out as soon as I can. Anyway, that's it, guys. I'll see you guys next time.